This is Loopline. In this video, I want to cover how to use Scrapebox to crawl a website, to get its internal links and that sort of thing. So I actually have a video on these two separate ways using the link extractor and the grab links by crawling a site separately, but grab links by crawling a site is pretty straightforward. Um, and then we'll talk about the link extractor and why we're making a separate video. So grab links by crawling a site. If you have one or a few sites, you can go to grab check here and grab links by crawling a site. And then you just enter whatever you want here. Um, your website, a domain, any starting point in there, and it will start crawling and you can set the level to crawl up to 10 levels deep. And so it'll crawl through the website, but this is only one link, one domain at a time. So if you have 100 or 500 or 1,000 or 10,000 domains that you want to crawl the internal links for, this isn't really a practical method. So what you can do is use the link extractor to do that. The link extractor add-on, if you don't have it, is go to show available add-ons and then find the link extractor and then either install it or update it as needed, close out of this, and then go back to add-ons and go to the actual link extractor and launch it. Now, I have a video on the grab links by crawling a site. I just briefly touched on it. I have a video on the link extractor, but I don't have it on the concept of how to use it to crawl a site. And people ask me this all the time. So that's why we're talking about this. So once you get to the link extractor here, this is very similar to the other videos. So you can go over that on how to use the link extractor. Really basic loading options. We can load from Scrapebox, from a file or from the harvester. We can start, stop. We can choose internal or external links. For the purpose of crawling a site, we only want to do internal. If I want to do external or internal, external, we can talk about that. You can just watch the other, other video I have. You also have the option of only getting do follow links. Um, I'm not sure that that matters for crawling an internal site. That's probably more if you're doing external, but that's how that works. You have export options when you're done. Show the save folder. Setting options where we can set the number of connections. We can do remove URLs with and without, so basically a blacklist, whitelist type thing. We can do a delay in seconds, which is pretty handy um, if you're only using one thread. If you have a site that wants to ban you or is banning your IPs because you're going too fast even on one connection, but you still want to scrape the internal URLs, you can set a delay here. And then you can also ignore links and read timeout and abort after loading if a site is too big. You can not grab links with HTTPS. You can randomize links before and after grabbing and treat subdomains as an external link. And then you can abort when less than X connections are active. This is super handy if you're doing this in the automator because you can build this whole process in the automator and just go through there and do that and we can talk about that at the end but basically you can set this maybe like say you're using 15 connections I'm going to set this at like three that way if it gets down to three connections it's just going to abort um, and that's because a thread could get locked by an external program or like an antivirus where it's scanning a URL that it thinks might have malware or maybe Windows just messes up or some third party program on your PC locks it but anyways that can happen um, and if that happens you'll just wait forever um, in like years, it would just stay there and wait for Windows to release the thread and it never releases it. Well, this kills the thread, so you don't have to worry about it once you get down to three connections. Anyways, um, I'm going to leave it off for this video because we're going to work with a low number here. So basically, I'm just going to also, there's tools I guess I should mention. You can randomize uh, the lists and that sort of thing. So I'm going to load in a list I have in the harvester here. It's only 62, 64 URLs, but that's fine for this video. I'm going to choose internal. Um, I didn't add any whitelist, blacklist stuff, that sort of thing, and I'm going to hit start. What this is going to do is it's going to go through and get all the internal links off of those exact pages. Now, what you're going to see is, for instance, the cars.org has four internal links. So we would call this level one, where we actually load up these pages. If I was going to load it in a browser like car.com and then look to see what other pages on car.com it links to, which so happens to have 20 in this case here on car.com. Now that's level one. So these links here that are extracted are my level two. So I'm actually just going to do show the saved folder here and it's sorted by the top. So I'm going to grab all these links. We can see here where it has all of these stuff that came up that are internal URLs for my cars website here. So I'm just going to grab them, copy these to my clipboard, for instance. And then I'm going to go down here and just paste them in here just so that I can easily import them. Now you notice I got 6,700. Let's remove duplicates. I think it, we are, never mind, we already did that. So we got 6703. And then over here, we're going to load those 6703 back into the 
link extractor. So follow me here. This was level one. We exported all these links, which is now this um, 6700 that's back here. So we exported those, and we're going to bring them back in, load them from Harvester, and then now we're going to scrape internal for those. So we had level one, and we scraped up level two. Now this is level two. We brought level two back in, and we're going to scrape the internal links for level two. Now, see like cars.com forward slash smart. We're going to scrape the internal links for level two and then export those again. So let's hit start. And this is obviously going to take a minute because you have 6,700 URLs. Now, notice when I brought up the text file here, it was all in order because that's how they get scraped. But when they get loaded into here, they're not in order because I have the setting set to automatically randomize them. That's a good thing because otherwise, I don't want to have like bankrate.com or cars.com and have like 15 connections or 50 or 100 all hammering on one domain at once. So a really great thing here is randomizing the, the domains spreads out your connections across all the various domains. And that way, you're not hammering on one and you're not going to get your IPs blocked. Now, you could use proxies with this if you want to use proxies check this box before you start the add-on um, or you can close down the add-on and go back here and check it if you are using a bunch of different domains which is the purpose of this video in the first place then there's no real point to use proxies they're just gonna slow you down your own connection is gonna be faster now if I was gonna do grab links by crawling a site then I might want to use proxies if I wanted to use like 50 connections use 50 proxies that way I'm not hammering on the same domain from 50 connections and one IP because then it's just going to ban me. Also bear in mind if you're doing that you want to be judicious because you might take a website down if it's on cheap hosting it might not be able to handle 200 connections whereas here if you have a bunch of domains they're all spread out by randomizing them so you're not going to take the website down by flooding the server and it can't keep up. So I'm just going to stop this because I think we have enough to get the point of this video. So remember, we did level 1, and this is what we got. This is level 2. Now all of these links that are extracted are level 3. So again, I'm going to look at this saved folder here, and I'm just going to grab them, copy-paste. Now we could just go to load here and track everything down, but this is easier and quicker. So now I've got 85,000. I didn't even go through there all the way. Let's load those up. Remember, that was level 2. This is level 3. We're going to load from the harvester. Now I get my 85,000 in here. This is level 3. And... Um, you can see that there's a lot here that are very similar, probably because they're all there. So let, here's a great example. If I wanted, if I didn't have my settings set to automatically randomize links after grabbing or on URL loading, and I guess I didn't, I was just randomizing them in here, um, we could do this. And if I go ahead and load this again, it will actually randomize them when I bring them in. But if I hadn't done that, I could go to tools and randomize the list of extracted URLs that were extracted or I could go to randomize the loaded URLs in the grid, which is here, and again, it will randomize them and give me a pop-up. So if I wanted to continue this, I could then go ahead and start this and let it run, and then again, I could export, re-import, and bring it back in. So basically, you're, you're exporting the results and then re-importing them and scraping the internal there, and each time you do that, it's like one more level, just like the levels here in the grab links by crawling a site function. The levels deep here is the same thing we're doing here. We're just doing it for a lot of sites at once. So usually with most sites, four to six levels deep, sometimes three to five, is going to net you the entire site. Now, sometimes it won't if it's a big site. Like if we're talking NewYorkTimes.com, CNN.com, Wikipedia, obviously this isn't going to work, and you could go out them all day, and you just go as deep as you need it. Or maybe if it's just a big site, a corporate site or whatever, has a lot of pages, um, then you could go ahead and go like five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten levels deep, whatever, whatever you need to do there. But um, that's how it works concept-wise to basically use the link extractor to crawl through websites. Now, obviously, if you load in thousands of websites, this is going to take a while because you can see I kept stopping it, and we're already getting into 85,000. If you load in 1,000 websites, you could easily be into the millions and millions of URLs by the time you get to level 3. Um, especially if they're all big websites um, or level four and that sort of thing. So if you want to go like 10 levels deep and you load in a thousand websites, you might get into the tens of millions of URLs by the time you're halfway done. And that's just going to take a while. And it's probably better to split that list and start with a smaller seed list, maybe a hundred URLs to start with. Um, and then basically what happens is once we're done with all of these, we can go ahead and um, bring them all in here 
what I'm going to do is I'm just going to import all of my various exports so you can see all my files that I have here I need to go to import and add to so let me just pause the video and do that and I'll be right back so I've got everything loaded in here and I wound up with 322,000 now bear in mind as we do this there's going to be a lot of duplicates so we remove duplicates inside of each run but the runs will cross over so let's just remove du duplicate URLs and we get 283,000 you can see we started with 64 URLs and I stopped it several times and we already got 283,000 URLs so that's how fast it can add up now if we wanted to automate this if I had like say I had that thousand or ten thousand URLs and I decided to break it down into chunks of 100 URLs each we could get the automator if we don't have it you can go to show available add-ons and then you can buy it um, or you can also install it and update it once it does take 12 hours to activate but once it, up to 12 hours could be a couple minutes but um, once that's done then you go back here to premium plugins and go to the automator and basically what's gonna happen is you're just gonna build this same loop uh, in the automator so we can go down here to our add-ons and go to the actual link extractor here and first of all I'm gonna do internal and then I can set my connections and I set my file so here I might select my source file like say I, I just call it like source.txt or whatever one.txt anyways and I put my first hundred URLs in there so let's just do it for simplicity's sake here um, select the source URL list and uh, I'm just gonna make a, a file right quick I'm just gonna call it one and let's say I put my first hundred URLs in there and so I'll select that and then I want to export the links found I'm assuming you know what these settings are I'm not going to go over them they're the same export them as um, round one round one okay sure so then basically then I'm going to go in here to the link extractor and run it again but on this round right I'm going to import the round one um, and actually I guess I should export if the file's not here, it's not going to work. So we actually need to make a text file called round one. And then select that as our export. Replace it. Go up here to link extractor. Again, internal, and then set up your settings. Select round one. Remember, that's the result from round one, which is effectively level two. And then I'm going to export those results as round two um, but basically then I'm exporting those results the internal results is level two then I run the link extractor again and again on this one I'm gonna import and start with round two and I'm gonna export to round three and I think you get the point here um, don't do that and that's a great reason too. when you do an automator file go back through and check everything once it's done because people make mistakes just like that um, and so basically uh, import round three I could do this again and keep going all day long but bear in mind this is still gonna take the same amount of time even though it's automated but you could set it up and let it run so and then this one I would import round three and export to round four whatever we're not gonna do that I'm just gonna delete that once it's all done then you wanna go back up here to the import URLs and add to make sure you do the add to and then I'm just gonna select um, my seed URLs because that's part of the list right I started with a hundred URLs and I want them to be included in my full list then I'm gonna add to here and go uh, round one because that's technically level two remember and then I'm gonna go round two because that's technically level three and then I'm gonna go round three and then I'm gonna want so that's gonna add everything into my harvester here and then I'm gonna remove duplicate URLs and then I'm just gonna go here to export URLs and save them off as you know final whatever and actually again we're gonna have to make that and so there now we have a set of URLs that have been run through so we started with our hundred way up here in our, our one dot text file and then at, at the end of the day I have an export here that if I go to um, right here my final file now I have a complete export of all the extracted internal URLs and so let's say I need to do this on a regular basis I build my automator file and then next time I want to do this maybe it's my second set of 100 URLs or maybe I just need to do it next week I just replace this one dot text open it up paste in my new URLs and then um, run the automator again just load it up and let this thing run overnight or uh, all day long or for several days or a week or however long it takes 
Um, and then if you really wanted to get fancy, if you had a list of 10 sets of 100 URLs, or you know, say you wanted to do 5,000 URLs and you broke them into 100 URL chunks, then you would have like 50 files. You could do a little batch script, or you know, make a little exe file or that sort of thing, and actually have the automator run an external program here and execute external program and then when this is all done you execute a program here and it will basically copy say I had another folder here and it had all of my original 50 files in it and then I'm gonna copy one of those files and overwrite this one dot text with one of my original 50 files and then delete that from the list and then it will we can go loop here and after that's done, it'll loop and it'll run the whole thing again and then output the final file. Obviously, I guess we'd have to have an external program here, a second one that would then, this one could copy from the original and overwrite this, and this one could copy off this final file to a list, a final folder, and, you know, name it with a unique name and or whatever, increment with a timestamp. I this, this is what I do. I run external programs that go through here and copy my old files out um, here and then into the one dot text and then I have the final file copied in here and just give it a fixed file name and then I use like a timestamp. Because you know if you timestamp out seconds it's always going to be the same even if it runs really fast. So or always going to be unique rather. So you can go all the way to that level and you could put in hundreds of files in this original folder and just let this thing run forever and ever and ever in a giant loop. And again, that's where that also when you go into the link extractor manually, remember here the um, settings killing this as of a set connections because I guarantee you if you process millions and millions and millions of URLs at some point an antivirus or a malware checker or some third-party program or Windows is going to freak out and lock one of the threads somewhere it just is going to happen um, and then this will automatically abort it and keep going uh, before this was in here you know I would come back and, and something might have been running because I'll let servers run for like days or weeks or months actually at a time and I come back and find out it's been stopped for two weeks because and I just wasn't checking on it or however long and you know this keeps it keeps it pumping keeps it flowing and will kill those threads and keeps everything humming along and so that is how you can use the automator to automate this whole process and in general how you can use the link extractor to basically crawl a site for internal links crawling lots of sites with the link extractor or crawling just one with the grab links by crawling a site and then you can do whatever you want with those things I guess I should also give a quick mention that Scrapebox's default file export format is Unicode so if you were planning to use these URLs with another program that doesn't support Unicode you want to go in here to options and save this as ANSI and then whenever you go in here to export URLs from Harvester Grid you want to save URL as an encoded ANSI file that way you don't have to worry about any Unicode or UTF-8 or incompatibility issues. So those are things to keep in mind. And that is how you can use a link extractor to crawl through sites. Thanks for watching this Scrapebox video. For more Scrapebox videos, click the subscribe button on your screen or click the subscribe button down below.